uh, that whole side was filled with computers, uh, an old 1170 that was all of our processing. And over here, there was another bank of two computers. Today, they call this the Seismo Lab. In 1980, this place was a key scientific center of the St. Helens eruption. It was just almost like chaos in a way. Those big clunky computers are gone, but the walls are filled with clippings and reminders of why earthquakes matter. There are still computers that can now fit into a small room, yet far, far more powerful, connected up to the field seismometers of the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network, listening for earthquakes, including quakes that can signal an eruption is brewing. On May 18, at 8.30 in the morning, I was eating breakfast at home. Now, Professor Emeritus Steve Malone was on the mountain working on a seismometer just two days before St. Helens blew up. A 1980-era picture of Malone is still tacked up on the wall. There were geologists from the USGS that were in the Forest Service offices in Vancouver, and they were reporting being able to see the plume, uh, that they had lost contact with uh, Dave Johnston, who they knew was not far away, and that this was much bigger than, than anyone thought. The months of buildup to the St. Helens eruption were plunging scientists into new territory. Cascade volcanoes are different than the slow-moving volcanoes of Hawaii. Northwest volcanoes explode. And we were hoping by our seismic monitoring we would see the precursors to anything more that would occur, some change in the seismic activity. That didn't occur. It was just one more earthquake that destabilized the north side of the mountain, that collapsed, that caused the eruption. All of that work we had put in for two months was for naught. That socially useful warning time of hours or a day or so, we didn't get. So there was a lot of discouragement and uh, despondency in the group here because of that and the fact that a colleague and many other people have been killed. The death toll 57. Tomorrow I'll take a look at the latest research seeking to map the liquid rock, the magma under Mount St. Helens and the water embedded in rock that can, can explode into clouds of steam driving ash and rock thousands of feet into the sky. It's a project called iMush that's using earthquakes and test explosions to make a map of the earth many, many miles underground where all this stuff lives. Wow. So much to learn. It's amazing. Thank you.